What's good, people? Episode we still don't know of the Victory and Vices podcast. We're just trying to work it out. There's been so many, but thank you for all fucking with us for so long. Oh, man, it's been a big week. Damn. And the names of us, we're below. A lot of you people still aren't adding us on Twitter and IG, by the way. It's disappointing. Very disappointing. It is disappointing. It's very disappointing yeah. that we had over 70 subscribers on fucking YouTube. No one of you actually tweeted us. And there's still one person in Mountain Hills in the USA. You listen to us every <laughs> week and you still haven't tweeted us. So what please, you if you're out there, get in touch. But yeah, damn, what a motherfucking week. What a week. So it hit us like a ton of bricks, this news, didn't it? Oh, man. Like, we had, City. <laughs> we had oh. other stuff. You know, We have loads of stuff to talk about, but this took the absolute priority. We have real life stuff to talk about as yeah. well, but this took priority, let me tell you. All right, where do we start, bro? Where where do we even begin? So th- this whole city thing, there's just there's so many angles you can come at it. So many uh, little topics inside the big topic. So there's layers to this, isn't there? There is layers, yeah. Um, so should we summarize. We summarize the situation to start. I know most people. Okay, will yeah, probably So you want to start from the top and work your way down, then, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Cool. So in a nutshell, City are banned from the Champions League for what is effectively money laundering. Mm-hmm. So. They've been presenting financial figures, results, accounts to football's governing bodies, and those aren't accurate. Is that the PC thing to say? That's correct. Obviously, they they have a two-year ban as it stands. Of course, their statement um, details that they are going to appeal, um, which will go to CAS, which is the Court of Arbitration for Sport, Mm -hmm. um, which isn't very straightforward, um, depending on the case. Um, It can sometimes go on for months and in a couple of cases, years. It drags on, yeah, it does drag so on. So they will appeal it. Obviously, they've got their, their side of uh, the story that they'll tell, but um, obviously what we know right now is that there's a two-year ban that's in place. Interesting times, bro. Yeah. Very interesting times. Now, that two-year ban is very significant because Manchester City, as we've seen this season, they need to rebuild. Mm-hmm. They need to replace Fernandinho. Yeah. They need to replace Aguero. They still haven't fully replaced Vinny Company. They need to replace Fernandinho. They need to replace David Silva. Leroy Sane looks like he could be leaving. De Bruyne with this news, mm-hmm. would he want to stick around for two seasons? Sterling has committed his future, which I think is very noble of him. He doesn't need to, but he has. Yeah, but obviously there's there's one thing saying in this moment when the shit's hit the fan that players are committing, but it's another thing in actually Oh yeah, doing that, you know? that so, situation will evolve so as well. Th- they're saying the things that the fans and the club want to hear currently to try and stabilise the situation. Whether they go on and do that is another ballgame altogether, right? That's now, accurate. It's, it's a very tricky time for City now because you've got a few players in that squad, um, Sterling being one of them, De Bruyne, um, and a couple of other sort of players that you would maybe say, Bernardo Silva, like in their prime, mm. um, were sort of, I think, Sterling and De Bruyne have got like a year or so left on their contract. Yeah, they, I actually read this the other day that there's a few with one year, a couple yeah. with two years, and all of a sudden that's sticky because then they go, well, if you're not going to have Champions League, yeah, I'm gone. And it's different if you're a player that's won the Champions League because mm. that's off your list, right? But players that are as good as De Bruyne and Sterling that have yeah. aspirations to win the Champions like League, they can get a big. Move. They're in the prime of their career, arguably, mm. like. Do they, and is it sensible that they wait two years, potentially, with, with not playing any Champions League football? That's two years where someone like a De Bruyne could go to a Liverpool. I know that's a little bit seedy, but he oh. could. Oh. Um, There's a lot of fans out there right now. But some could. rubbing their hands and some but going, you know, who is this guy? Robin Van Persie went to United, right? Anything can happen, yeah? I don't know if... Um, <laughs> But know. he could go to a Barcelona. Now you're talking about he language. could go to um, a Real Madrid. A Real Madrid. He could even go back to Germany. Right? He would have a lot of options oh, look, at the, PSG. The, the top five clubs, they all want him. That's a um, and you know, there's a similar thing that could happen with with Pep. You know, with well, interesting because Pep is. We were kind of like, has Pep run his course? We were, mm, we were kind of debating it. We were mm. thinking to ourselves, well. Has he taken City as far as he can? He spent the best part of a billion. I mean, he's got no real defence. An ageing defensive midfielder is number one striker. Aguero is kind of, you know, he's not not on the outs. He's he's in the twilight of his career. Yeah, he's he's coming to the end now. Mm -hmm. And I just look at the Pep situation and I think to myself, ah, maybe just, maybe, just maybe a, a move somewhere else would be better for him. Yeah, and what what interested or what interests me, and that's now kind of a past tense thing because of what's happened, 
was that we've never really seen Pep Guardiola rebuild a team, right? Yeah, I've he's never, never really done seen that. Him build a team either. Well, totally was, he's like with Barcelona, was he sort of helped develop the youth side into what to a degree, was yeah, brilliant? To a degree, yeah. um, and obviously, he's taken teams that are pretty good already mm. and then added to it and developed them a bit further. added his flavor to it, yeah, that's a fact. But yeah. he's never, so when a team that he's uh, managed is coming to the end of its cycle, he's mm. left before he's rebuilt. He's not a rebuilding manager. That he isn't. And what I was interested to see is if, now before this, this news has come out, if they didn't win a Champions League this year, would he stay? Would he go through the rebuilding process with them? Mm. And what that would look like because we've never seen Guardiola do that. We now, have. There was scope for that to happen. Now, with this news, obviously, if they don't win the Champions League this season and this ban stays, yeah, then they the one trophy he wants and City want, they can't win that yeah. for the next. There'll be three seasons. And the one thing about this that has serious implications now is all eyes are on City. Mm-hmm. It's when once you are sort of dealt a rough hand publicly I say a rough hand I mean it's probably the correct hand it's probably the wrong terminology I'm using mm-hmm. but when you're made an example of people will then hold you up here and go okay you're you're the barometer now this is this is what happens to people like you and people who do wrong do him and City can't make that same mistake twice you see yeah. it's, it's impossible so the issue they have then is they're going to be watched so hard when it comes to spending money that I think they may even struggle to compete in the actual in in the market period yeah. to be honest with you we've talked about on this podcast many times so for everybody that knows me and Becky that come up to us and spoke to us in person the Man City topic is always one that people find interesting yeah. because we've said this I don't even know for how long we've said this how sustainable a Manchester City because the idea of financial fair play is basically you spend what you earn, right? That's the idea. You generate your own income, and with that income, you spend your money. Now, Manchester City are spending vast sums of money on your De Bruyne's, your Sterling's, Aguero's, all these other players, right? And they spend a lot of money on training facilities, buying younger players. They are at a situation now where they can't really break even financially because if you're having a 100-point season and you still can't fill a stadium... People are going, hang on a minute, what's going on with this? Yeah. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? And people are, even the governing bodies with them are looking at this going, this doesn't add up. Do you know what I mean? And we'll come to the guy who exposed it all in a bit because he is, well, he is a marked man. He is, yeah. And But do you know what, right? As as is with every story, there are two sides to it's every story, right? And there, there's many people that have put forward sort of the notion that Yes, Man City have broken financial fair play rules, but what are those rules and how realistic are those rules? Because there's a lot of people that have mentioned how UEFA, Mm -hmm. to an extent, make these rules kind of difficult in the sense that they protect the elite clubs in yeah. Europe. You've heard this side yeah, of it, right? Yeah, so, heard that side, yeah. And, and there is an argument to be had with that as well. Yeah, and obviously, we'll, we'll sort of. We'll open up on that a little bit now. Right? So okay. the the elite clubs of European football are, and I'm not going by the form that they're currently in. You talk about Inter in the Premier League, Barca, Barca, Madrid, you got United, Liverpool, Liverpool. Um, to, to an extent before Arsenal, yeah, yeah. and then you have got your Bayern Munich, probably Juventus, and PSG, which is which is very PSG, ground. not in terms of history, you know. No. So I wouldn't class them as elite, but they've got six or seven clubs, right? If you look in the Premier League, obviously it was United, Liverpool, Arsenal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in terms of size. Now, you go back like 20 years ago, mm-hmm. or 80s, into the 90s, into the noughties, yeah. it was United and Arsenal before Chelsea came along. That. And other teams couldn't get near United or Arsenal. Nobody get near. Yeah, United dominated everything financially. Yeah. And it was United, Liverpool, Arsenal had the pick of all the young players because nobody could compete with them because they were so far behind. Mm. Now, if you wanted to organically grow to reach the size of United or Arsenal, Liverpool, it would have taken you 20, 30 years. I was going to say even longer. It yeah, might take 50 longer. years. And yeah. that's if you do it right. Yeah. So the only way that someone was able to add to the competitiveness yeah. was investment. Yeah. What someone may call financial doping. I yeah, and the you know your opinion on whether you think that that's right or wrong is remove that for one set, you know, for one yeah, set. Yeah, yeah. 
and you just have to accept it for other clubs to make the league more competitive in terms of the clubs that can compete. To catch up, yeah, yeah. You have to. To catch up, they needed to invest money. Mm. Chelsea did it first, and then City followed. Mm. Now, there are positives of that. Obviously, the league now, you're looking at five or six, seven teams that can all beat each other, whereas, you know, it used to be United Arsenal. Yeah. Yes, City spent a lot of money. Um, it's probably not very well balanced in the books, but they got young talent coming through. They created jobs. They've done a lot for the community, the infrastructure, sort of the academy. It, you know, there's a lot of positives. Mm. They've bought players from unsold players to different teams around Europe, so the money is is filtering out also. Um, so f- from that angle. Like Your glass is half full. I like it. For, I just, I just think that I like it. You, we, we've seen you for being biased fuckers in the past, right? And they and, are very and biased. They fuckers. are. There's many things wrong with the for right? <sighs> and Ain't it's almost like because City have spent all this money and they still haven't cracked Europe. You forget no. they've only cracked the Premier League. Mm-hmm. And I, I do think to a degree there is part of UEFA that are looking after their own a little bit. Yeah, I would say I would tend to agree with that as well because I look at the Real Madrids, I look at Barcelona, I look at PSG. I mean PSG is on dodgy ground now. Mm. Oh, if you're gonna make an example out of Man City, you gotta come for PSG too. Yeah, they're next. You got to come for PSG, and a lot of the issues is uh, surrounding. It's, oh, I mean, yeah, like you said, obviously, they give, it's almost like you take from the rich and you give to the poor type of thing in a sense that the, the money that you're laundering is being distributed all around Europe yeah, and all around the world. And from a moral standpoint, okay, there's arguments you've made quite well there. But then you look at the actual, from a legal perspective, and, oh, bro, there's so much red tape that you've got to go through now. Yeah. Oh, there is a That's shit true. ton of red tape. But the way financial fair play rules are are in place it just makes it so difficult if not next to impossible for a club mm. to, to be competitive with the United Madrid's Barcelona without doing this yeah, sort of yeah, thing yeah. like how do you do it you, you know you can't you be do it organically yeah you yeah, can't yeah. be chairman of football come saying here's our 50 year plan <laughs> no I know you're, I mean, you're very right even now even to get to this stage yeah what a city now 10 years deep yeah, so yeah exactly yeah, it's, a, yeah, it's so just over 10 years and they it? still yeah. haven't won the Champions League so and like obviously, you know, they've brought exceptional players to the Premier League. They've improved the marketability of the Premier League even more. Played some of the best football. Some of the best Premier football League we've ever seen. seen. Yeah. They brought Guardiola. Yeah. So like, I'm I'm not saying for a second that morally, ethically, you and know, you don't condone, legally, that they've yeah. they've ticked all the right boxes because you know they've yeah. been exposed. Yeah, yeah. But I suppose what I'm asking is, uh, you know, is it have UEFA or the rules that are in place really are, are they making it possible for anybody? To, to be competitive with the elite clubs. It's a fact. It's interesting, bro. It's an because interesting topic. You can say, I can say to you, um, like, you're, you're trying to achieve something, right? Yeah, this yeah. Is, I don't know what it is. And I'm saying, so, you know, you're trying to achieve that, right? But you can't do this. Mm. And you can't do this. Or this. Or this. And you can't spend this. And you can't do that. Yeah. Or this. But achieve it. Like it's that. Next, it's, it's next to impossible. You're going to be like, well, well, that's not fair. Or like, I well, can't. You I just, can, you'll just yeah. be like, look, I can't. And and that like, and I'm a United fan. Do you know what I mean? And and I'm, I'm you know, it's not like I'm defending City. I'm just saying as I see I it. I like the fact, obviously, as well, that the rivalry is now there. Do you know, it's bigger yeah. than it ever was in that respect. I look forward to Man City games yeah. against United, even though United get a bit, they get a bit of a bum in. I'm like, you know what? <laughs> it is what it is. It's it's got that competitive edge. I like seeing. I was going to say 22 world-class players, but then I remembered Phil Jones <laughs> plays for Manchester United still. So. 12, yeah. maybe 13. So I remember 11 world-class City players on the City side and and then Rashford on the other side. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's about it. But yeah, moving forward, going back to the exposure side of things. Yes, because, um, interesting. Oh boy. Oh boy. This now, I'm throwing this out there. I want me and you to make a movie about it, right? <laughs> because I want us to write a script or I want someone to write me a script and we'll go, you know, halvesies or thirdsies or quarters, whatever, whatever people want. If you want in on it, let me know, because this could be a blockbuster. So this was done by a guy called Rui Pinto. He's a Portuguese guy. He did this in his spare bedroom, right? <laughs> Not too dissimilar to this. So he basically started football leagues where he would hack football clubs. He would look at players' contracts. He would basically just expose the corrupt side of football, right? Now get this, right? Because this is off 
I won't say the uh, certain websites, I don't want to name them, right? But basically, uh, he's been arrested now, and he's been put in a Portuguese jail, and he is awaiting uh, basically a court case in Portugal. So this is just, this is nuts. Like, if you, if you said to me there's a film about a guy in his spare bedroom who hacked a football club or sporting institution, downloaded what I'm reading here, 70, and I'm, I, again, this figure might not be accurate, 70 million documents and 3.4 terabytes of information, right? Jesus and he has exposed everything from money laundering to tax fraud and to clubs breaching financial fair play. This guy downloaded 70 million documents, and this is just Man City, by the way, right? This is just them. them this, alone, is, yeah. this is them alone. This thing is huge. This has got Hollywood written all over it. This guy hacked the unhackable, and he took it all, and he said, you know what? I don't even want any money for it, and he gave it straight to the press for free, and now he's in jail. Guy's a hero. So, this is it. So, is this... The evidence that UEFA have got now, it's all his evidence. It's and that's all it. his evidence. So, my question here as I well know you're with this as is, well. like, if he's obtained that illegally, yeah, it, like, is that admissible? In, can that be used in uh, court? Uh, and you know what? This topic came up the other day, and I'm glad you say that. It can be used in court. How? I don't know how, but there is a ruling somewhere that there's evidence there that can be used, and they can make it stick. Yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, I'm I'm no lawyer, right? <laughs> you you actually presented yourself very well then from a legal standpoint. So I already know you've been in trouble multiple times. <laughs> <laughs> but that was way too smooth, <laughs> way too smooth, and we didn't even practice that either. <laughs> we never practice. Um, but but yeah, like if you're UEFA, I I understand if if like in, information is as important as this lands in your lap, which just incriminates you know Manchester City. Of course, you're going to want to find a way to use it. I just, I just wasn't aware that there was legal ways in which you, you could use it. It's like, yeah, there like is. A, you know, smaller scale. If you like break it, if you're a police officer and you break into somebody's house without a warrant to obtain yeah, evidence, you, just, it you can't use them. it. Yeah, so yeah. like, what, what's the? Like he's incorrectly obtained that. I, I might have to do some reading on that. Bro, it's an interest. Bro, it's got it's got movie written all over it, right? The Borussia Dortmund fans oh. held up a banner appealing for the authorities to drop the case the other day when um when they had their match as well because he has exposed the ugly side of football. And if you're interested in football leaks, just Google football leaks and you will see players' contracts. You will see emails. There's so much you can see, and it's. It's just incredibly interesting. And Rui Pinto, I'm telling you, I mean, look. There's a Netflix documentary bro, waiting, haven't you? I'm we telling you, I'm first. telling you, this could be on the silver, this could be on the big screen, it could be on Netflix, right? It could be on Hulu, it could be on Amazon. It has so much potential. I think I'm the only person seeing the actual movie potential in it right now. A lot yeah. of other people are still focused on, oh, you know, it's it's fucking, he's exposed Pep Guardiola and all this. Bro, I get that. Who, who do you play? We need, who can, who can play him in a movie? Who could play that guy? Rui Pinto. Yeah. Who do you think? Just looking at him now, because we, you see, you guys can't see him at the minute, but. The hair. Yeah. Who Jimmy Neutron. Yeah. Um, what, okay, so what sort of um, personality traits do you think that said person would need to have? I'm going to throw it out there. Zach Efron. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to throw Zach Efron out there right there. Yeah, I'm sure I got his number in my WhatsApp. Yeah, yeah, but no, but we could get it, right? I mean, all you got to do is DM him on IG or something. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm sure it'd be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, I mean, amongst all the box, he's probably got DM him so on are, IG. So are we, like, pitching this idea to, like, a production company and they get the stars, or are we going to just find people ourselves on our level to play it I think it would be a bit of both try and blow it up I think it would be a bit of a both yeah, yeah. yeah. but if Zac Efron is out there so if, like, Zac Efron did Ted Bundy very well so I think he could do Ru- Rui Pindo very well and he watches the podcast and he watches this as well yeah so shout out to Zach. but mm-hmm. I'm telling you it's got movie written all over it it's a fucking okay. mind blowing story we'll, um, we'll look into it bro believe me we shall and anybody that wants to invest Subscribe to the channel. Yeah, we get like <laughs> get a, in the comments below. Like a Patreon, yeah, or like yeah, a we should jump. GoFundMe page going, bro. GoFundMe pages are popular as shit right now. I'm telling you. And we we built this shit from the ground we up. We did. Do you know what a so, GoFundMe page? I'm not against that either. So if anyone wants to start that for us, that's great. But yeah, going back to Man City very quickly. Yeah. Um, the other implications: Do they get stripped of their league titles? Ah, I was waiting for you to ask this. Should um, they get stripped of their league titles? 
So there's, there's two there's two answers to that. They could get stripped of their titles and the like history books are blank. Yeah. Like a Lance Armstrong kind yeah. of thing. Or you you Juventus to a degree. Yeah. Yeah. Or you can get uh, stripped of your titles and they get passed down to the the next team, mm. which I'm sure in one case is United. Mm. Jose Mourinho, see that interview? Mm. But his um oh, I did. his best achievement. Jose, Jose, Jose. And oh, oh, how I wish you were still there. Obviously, Liverpool would would win the title as well. I'd, I'd take that one on the chin because they're going to win one anyway. Do you know what I mean? So no, yeah, and we'll yeah, get one as well. No, yeah, so I'll take that I, one. If I'm, a, well, say if I'm a, as a United fan, and I've been reading a lot of Liverpool fans saying the same thing, you, you don't want to win a title that way. It's it's too late. You're winning by default, essentially. Yeah, yeah and yeah. You, what you can do throw an open top bus parade now. Like the moment's gone. Like <laughs> that, that's not the way you want to win it. There's you, people who would. <laughs> they so, would. Yeah, I'm sure there are fans that would like to, you know, to just look at the Wikipedia page and show that they've won a title. Yeah. Or they won. Would Stephen Gerrard get a winner's medal? He would. Have you noticed there's that a Sky Sports article saying that? I would that. die laughing if Stephen Gerrard got presented that. Because he's clearly a man of pride, right? Like, I'm not a Liverpool fan, but I understand what he is, is his significance to the game of football. And I think he would throw that in the bin straight away. I think he would bin it. Please tell me you've seen the Sky Sports article of him saying he's very interested here. I, s- I saw the headline. I didn't read the article itself. So I kind of skimmed. Well, he, he's basically sort of saying that he he is very interested to hear the outcome of this sort of what happens. And like, it's a bit thing him saying that because he currently manages a club that got relegated down how many divisions because oh, yeah, Rangers, yeah, because they were weren't being very. I don't know the Rangers' history because I'm not that big into Scottish football, but um, I imagine... The irony that he's managing a club that's uh, only on the bounce back from that. Um, I don't don't know, like... If you... The opinion I just gave on the flip side of this argument would tell you and the people watching that I'm not that arsed about it and I kind of think on the other side that you wait for being a bit overprotective... So uh, yeah, perhaps you know they've they've broken the rules, so they should be fined a lot yeah. of money, um, and you know if they're banned from Ch- Champions League, I think that's a, a big enough punishment. I don't then think that they should be stripped of all their trophies. Like I, ju- I just don't think it's it's the right thing to do. It's an interesting. You got Saracens, obviously in in rugby. Yeah. You know they yeah, they yeah, went over yeah. their salary cap. I don't think they've been stripped of their. I uh, again, I haven't kept up with that story only because I'm not that big into mm. rugby, so I could kind of like take it or leave it. But I saw the story though. Yeah, yeah. just think there's like if you're going to find them X amount of million, um, take their way to Champions League football and then strip some of their titles. I just think it's overkill. It's just so like this, this, you just bumming them from every angle. <laughs> like <laughs> yeah, it's, like if it, it's, it's, break, it's, like. it is. It is. It is. It's um. Like, I know what you mean. Uh, do you know what it is though? They, because they are the first. They yeah. will be made an example and of, and it's like they were the best team in the years that they won it. You know, United were spending the same money as them. Mm. Um, Chelsea have spent similar money to them. So have Liverpool now as well. You know, so like, yeah, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. But yes, their money wasn't fully legal, but they were the best team at that time. So yeah. find them, maybe ban the Champions League, but I don't think they should. Well, be it's such what about you? It's, uh, I mean, look. I'm happy for them to not be in Europe for two years as long as it stops Liverpool winning the league. I'm fine with it. Let let Man City focus on the league yeah, for two once seasons. Is enough. United aren't going to win it, so, so I'm fine with it. The next question that we have on implications then, okay, is the so there's a lot of people saying that there's there's potential now that this can open up the fifth spot mm. in the league. I've read it like from a few things that that's not 100% guaranteed yet not yet but yeah, there, yeah, but yeah. it looks like that'll be a fifth spot like wh- wh- what? what's your take on that you my take on that is Sheffield United are going to look good <laughs> in Europe when Sheffield Bramble United Lane. when Sheffield United fortress. go to Madrid and turn them over Hobbles. I will applaud look it's going to be one it ain't going to be United I'll and tell you that now like <laughs> I think it could cause further embarrassment for United because you know, with top four, you know, me and you were we're a bit thinking like, ah, we're probably not going to get. I top know four. United won't get it. Um, I said at the start of the season, struggled. come seventh. I, yeah, I maintain that. And we've struggled to break in back into that top four um, in the last few years. If they open that to a fifth spot, and we still don't get it, that just makes all you look like even more of a substitute teacher, doesn't it? Like you always say. Oh man, I wish you would go. But like, yeah, yeah. If there's four, we don't make it. We're like, ah, we knew that anyway. If there's five, and like, a sh- if Sheffield United, look. The, the um. harsh reality is this: United are not going to come fifth. 
United won't even come sixth. They'll probably come seventh. Arsenal are only a point, point behind United now. And Arsenal have been trash all season. Arsenal haven't even woken up until February, right? And they're still going to finish ahead of United. Sheffield United are going to finish ahead of United. Wolves are going to finish ahead of United. Chelsea, Spurs, they'll all finish ahead of United, right? I'm telling you now because United haven't got it in them. And they're being managed by the wrong guy. I'm not going to digress because I'll just get annoyed, right? So we'll, we'll wrap it up, right? In terms of the Man City talk, um, just very quickly before we go, Jaden Sancho, subject to um, some very big talk um, about moves to Chelsea, about moves to Manchester United. There's talk of Man City. I think that'll be sort of slid out you know, the back door now. That's, that's not going to happen. Yeah. Um, where do you think his future lies after the Euros or before the Euros if he goes? I just want you to pick, in your expert opinion, where would you place Jadon Sancho as the, the best next move for him? Not the move you necessarily think he will make, but the best next move. Well, his best move is... Uh, well... I don't think it's United. I don't think it's United either. As I, much I, as it pains me to say that, because I'd love him there, I don't think it is. Yeah, I'd love him there. Like, I, don't, I also like Chelsea are in for him, you know, potentially, or or Liverpool. Chelsea with no William and Pedro means obviously Zayech and Sancho. The space is free. Yeah. Liverpool, I don't see where he really fits in. Unless like a Salah goes. Yeah, I don't see the Liverpool move. I could see the Chelsea move. The United move, me and Vecchi discussed this the other day. I could see it for money purposes and commercial purposes, but that's just a stepping stone to something else. Like if he's being sold, obviously, you know, they've signed Fernandez now, obviously, to have him. Mm. Um, if they're saying that the East Island Dream, like, you know, this summer we're going to have a massive overhaul. And if there's potential at all, he could be going and something like a potch could be coming, like we said. I like that. Then you know you could be saying these things to Jaden Sancho, and he could be going, "Hmm, okay, the the landscape is it's seems slightly a different, different yeah, and yeah. and we you know something like a potch with these sort of technicians, you know maybe we could go places." But the way the current uh, situation is, I can't see all that much of an attraction apart from the history of the club and the wages, right? Okay. Um, so Chelsea, as much as it pains me to say it, the fact they've also got Zayech, which we've spoke about so many times oh man one of my favourite players in Europe as well for 38 million and I've said about his stats before he's a steal it's, it's a steal you know like Tielemans was a steal for 40 million Zayech for 38 is a bigger steal yeah if, and yeah like Pedro and, and William are on their way out and obviously that's if yeah he would be a good fit for Chelsea he'd be a very good fit for Chelsea if I was him mm-hmm. and I would I would make a very big push again it might not necessarily happen this season if you had to wait maybe one more season but if I was him, I'd be pushing for Barcelona. Because you've got Ansu Fati that is he's only he's only a, he's mm-hmm. like twelve, he's only a pup, right? So he's not gonna be you know, he's not gonna be pushed straight into the first team and play every single week. And you've got Messi then. How old's Messi? Thirty four, thirty five? Uh, no, I think Ronaldo's thirty four, thirty five, isn't he? Messi's like thirty is he thirty two, thirty three? But Messi that. Messi's only got a season or two left in him at Barca, I at think. The top, Beyond top. that I don't think he's got too much else. Suarez yeah. is struggling. Dembele is in Griezmann problem. doesn't look all that great there. Griezmann has not settled like you would have thought he would have Barca. Mm-hmm. So for me, I'm just throwing it out there now. Jaden Sancho's people do what you can to get him to Barcelona. Because if you can get Jaden Sancho there and then you can get Kylian Mbappe in a couple of years as well, you're taking over European mm-hmm. football again. That's my opinion. What do you reckon? Good show? Yeah, no, that's not a bad shout also. What about the Madrid option? Madrid? Mm, I, I'm more of a Barcelona fan than a Madrid fan. I just, I just like Barcelona. I, th- I like what yeah. they stand for. But like he's Jaden Sancho is like an out-and-out winger, and he would suit Madrid very well. I mean, yeah. him Hazard. I think Benzie's on his way out a little bit now. So and when you're then really ending from Hazard, so that move doesn't yeah. seem to so far have gone that um, much to plan. Bale, you know, so. Yeah, I suppose it depends. I, obviously, you've got Vinicius, you've got Bale, yeah. you've got who else? They got the, Madrid have signed obviously a lot of young Brazilian talent as well. So I don't know if they'd maybe yeah. want Sancho. I think the what we're realizing here, there's, there's three or four clubs ahead of United that already you would think he would suit better. I think Barcelona would be down to the ground. But uh, but as we know, money talks. Oh, it does. And it, if United aren't attracting players based on their on the field um, sort of antics at the moment, athletes, achievements, yeah. then they certainly still yeah. can financially. So yeah, I think if the only st- st- sort of struggle Barca would have is. Dembele is primarily injured again now for the rest of the season. They'll mm. struggle to really offload him. Coutinho, they may struggle to offload him. Um, and there's just players within that squad that just haven't gelled that they might need to get rid of first before they can buy a Sancho. And that would be the one saving grace for United or Chelsea is that 
they could give cash money up from the street. Yeah. But yeah, that's it. All right, cool. We'll wrap it up. So that's us done for this week. We'll be back next week. Like we said, guests are going to be cut up over the next couple of weeks, so stay tuned. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe to the channel. Our ads are in the bottom comments as well. So yeah, make sure you, you know add us up for fuck's sake. Like at least someone <laughs> add us up. Jesus Christ I'm almighty. Doing already. I know, 70, 70 subscribers over Christmas and not one person tweeted us. Unbelievable. But anyway, that's how the world of the internet works. So I'm Maurice Booner. This has been James Vec. We out till next week. Take care, people. Ciao.